Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and in today's session we'll be continuing our modelling for the wooden bridge over the stream scene. This particular video is looking at how we can reduce the polygon count and optimise for games before painting. It's important you do that before painting because you won't be able to edit your shape very easily at all once you've started the painting process. It might be that you're not too worried about polygon count, then you can skip this video and go to the next one where I'll talk about how we create the other aspects of our scene and then you'll be ready for painting in the next episode. I'm sure there's many out there who are desperate to get painting, but you must understand the basics of where to put the polygons in order to paint on them so it looks real. So I'm going to give a bit of an explanation about that. Now let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got three bases, and if I go to wireframe mode, you can get a bit of an idea about how detailed they are. So it goes from this one, which is the original. I did another practice one, and this is the one we did the other day, which is a bit more high poly. Someone did notice that I'd left some n-gons in places. That wasn't intentional, but we can easily clean them up today. So let's go back into solid mode and take a look at how that influences our silhouette or our outline. You can see a bit of the influence that the higher poly is having on our shapes. But if I zoom out to about here, you can see there's not a huge amount of difference between the models. You can see a very sort of sharp edge here, and you can see more smoothness on this model where there's more polys. But as soon as we go in, and move around our object, we can really see the sharp edges on my lower poly model. And we can, to some degree, on this slightly higher one here, not so much, but we can still just about see it on our, let's call it high poly one, even though it is a low poly version. So you have to consider how close your camera is going to be to your model. That's really important. So if this was for our game about getting across the stream, and we're at this distance, then a higher poly count is possibly necessary. Let's quickly take a look at how this looks with the paint on. So you can still see on the outline there's some sharp edges, but it's not too bad. As soon as you start painting, you can paint in some of that sort of detail of curves and things like that. But these sharp edges are still very noticeable. If I move up here, we can see the sharp edges here, and especially in the corners there, which is why I opted to do slight curves for our ones. Another great way of learning about this is to go to somewhere like Sketchfab. So here I am on Sketchfab, and for any model I think you can go down to the model inspector and you can come up to here and that gives you this menu on the left hand side and you can see their topology by clicking on these colors and I can go in and study how they've done things. Now this is a wonderful piece of art, if I just turn this off actually, you can see this fantastic hand painted piece here. And then looking at the topology, you can see that they've used sort of transparent textures in these areas, which we'll be using later for things like our plants. But their base is very rigid and sharp, so it's really low poly. But they've gone very high poly on these interesting, don't know what they are in fact, and possibly too high really. Did they need that much detail? Not that I'm criticizing because this is a fantastic piece. Also at the top here, we can see that they've got a cut down the middle here. This is probably because they modeled it as a mirror and then just kept it on and didn't remove it. But they could have reduced the poly count if they'd got rid of that edge. And this circle is very high poly. There's not much you can do about circles to be honest. But you can see they possibly could have tidied up their polygons just around here and got rid of a few. And that's if you were really optimizing it. But to be fair, it's really low poly. Those few tiny errors are not going to make much difference to your poly count or your game's performance these days. But it is worth bearing in mind that most studios will have a polygon count limit. So if you're doing a game character for mobile, for example, 2000 faces is very common. And that's where you need the detail in your painting more than in your model. So let's go back to Blender and our model. And I'm going to talk about how we can optimize our higher poly version that we made the other day. So I'll click on that. I'll go to isolation mode and back to solid mode. Into edit mode. Now, when you're happy with your shape, you can start merging some of your vertices to reduce the polygon count and you want to start merging them where they will not affect your silhouette. So if I look in this area here, will we ever see that silhouette? If I go around the edges, no, we won't. So we can join lots of these vertices together and have triangles going towards that area. However, I do need to keep this sort of shape so I won't be able to join any of these together without getting a sharp edge there. And in fact, from top view, looking at this shape, I feel that this isn't making use of these two vertices and it's very sharp and pointy here and pointy there. So I think I'll edit that. The easiest way would be to go into vertex mode, select one vertices, proportional editing on and G to grab. And then I can smooth that out slightly. And now we can see more of a curve and we're making the most of our polygons that are there. It's no use having extra vertices 
if they're not making a difference to your shape and silhouette. So where I've got a high polygon count is on the edges here, but it looks like I need them. Because if I were to join these two, suddenly we'd have a sharper drop there, and we wouldn't have this smooth curve around the edge. And perhaps on the base, being careful of any pointy sections here. And it's arguable that I could have another vertices in here just to pull this out so there's a smoother transition to this point here. I can use the knife tool for that easily. So you need to go around your shape looking for those points and making sure you've got some nice curves in your transitions if that's the result you're after. So when you're sure you're happy with all your outlines, that's when we can start reducing the topology. Now let's just take another look at the original in edit mode. You can see that this one has lots of triangles in and triangles are nothing to be afraid of. In fact, all your models and faces when they're brought into something like a game engine or when they're rendered even will be converted into triangles. It's just easier to model in quads. Also your face count is often counted in triangles. So your face count limits. So be aware of that as well. So back to our model into edit mode and start thinking about optimizing this and reducing the poly count. The best way to do that is to turn snapping on. So snapping up here and have it on vertex. That way, when you grab a vertex, let's say we don't want so many in here, I can grab that one and pull it to the next one. Now I'll undo that a second. And there's a few things about this you want to be aware of. Just pressing G will enable it to go anywhere pretty much. And that can be a bit awkward. So I'll right click to cancel that. Pressing G twice will allow me to edge slide. So it will only go to one of its closest vertices. And that's more suitable. Then I won't go to vertices over here or maybe even one in the background if I'm in wireframe mode and all sorts of problems like that. So double tap G to pull them into another vertices. The problem being now that if I press G again, it hasn't actually joined it together. What I need to do is turn auto merge on. So when two vertices touch each other, because they're snapping together, they automatically merge. We've got a tool for that in the tool panel down here to auto merge. And now when I double tap G, bring it across and press G again, it's merged together. And I want to go around this shape wherever I can't see a silhouette and merge these together. But I need to stop at the end here because I can start to see the silhouette, especially when the water's in here, I'll be able to see the edge of this. I can keep tidying up here though. Select double tap G and move it in. Now it is affected if I come to this point here, but the water will come up to there. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. You could even argue that you can get rid of some of these faces if your water is solid. I like to keep it in just in case I wanted to edit the water material slightly in my game engine and make it see through, then I have a base to play with. But if you're truly optimizing, then you'd want to get rid of them. So I'm going to need my cuts there and up to here, but maybe not so much in this area here. So I can grab those and pull them in, check for this side. I can just about see them there. So hopefully you're understanding the point about how you can optimize these things. Have a look at the top of our shape. Do we need some of these extra points in here? Perhaps not all along the width. So we can possibly optimize some of these like this. And possibly not so many at the edge here. But do be aware that is changing my shape across the silhouette here. Now this does take a fair bit of getting used to. And you don't have to panic too much about this in the early stages of your game design career. Even if you are making a game, a few polygons here and there is not going to make a huge difference. But if you truly want to understand how to optimize, then this is the sort of techniques you'll need to know. Also around here where I've kind of messed things up slightly with all my cutting, I can just reduce the polygon count here. And that's fine. Although I have got an end gone here and here again, haven't I? If you get that, Select two and J to join. So what I'm going to do now is a time lapse of me reducing this shape and sorting out any other end gons that I see. And you can see that I'm constantly checking the silhouette and the outline, making sure that I haven't interrupted that. Actually, what you can do as well, if you've got a long row, which I should have done with this is select all those vertices and Alt M is another merge option. So you can do it by distance. And these are all closer to each other. So if I slowly bring up the distance, you can see them sort of pulling into each other. And there we go.
and you can see the count of how many is removed down the bottom there. So if you've got a long line like that and they're relatively close to each other, you can merge by distance. So I've managed to reduce that a fair bit and we're now down to about 350 faces, which I think is fine. Again, it does depend on how far away or close you are. Now I could go a lot further and reduce the polygons even more, but it's probably not necessary just for a tutorial and generally speaking, a few polygons aren't going to make too much difference to your game's performance. So don't worry too much about this, but just recognize how you can go about reducing the polygon count on your models. So have a go at that. Next time we'll be finishing off the modeling side of things ready for painting.